This is great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stack and uh, fellow Hall of Famers. Thank you for that the tribute. This is a very special moment for me. Um, most of you probably don't know I got my big break in baseball right here in, in Cooperstown. Back in 1966, I had the opportunity to uh, pitch against the Minnesota Twins. I, I'd been sent, sent down that spring because I needed to work on a few things, and the uh, St. Louis Cardinals had a pitching problem at the, at the major league level, so I went to work on my game down in the minor leagues, and it just so happens that that year, in 1966, the, the Cardinals played an exhibition game against the Twins here, and uh, they invited me up to pitch that game from the Tulsa Oiler baseball team at that time. And I had the good fortune to strike out uh, 10 Minnesota Twins that, that game in seven innings. So that uh, sort of precipitated my return back to the major leagues. Uh, and uh, I'm, so, I'm so happy to be back in this wonderful town. They say life goes in circles, and we're back here some 28 years later. So it's, it's great and wonderful to be back in this tremendous town. Thank you so much for being out here today. I, I think it's an honor uh, for a kid, you know, from North Miami to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. You know, every, every, every kid that puts on a bat and a glove probably has this same dream to, to appear here one day. And it's been my good fortune to do this. So something I love for 24 years and, and to, get, to get paid for it is quite a blessing. You know, I can't uh, begin to describe my gratitude, pride, and joy of, to be here today, but that's not going to stop me from trying. Also, I, I was as known as Silent Steve all those years, and this would probably be the most talking I've, I've done in quite a while. So. Which, of course, brings me to the baseball writers. There's your chance. Uh, obviously, I'd like to extend my... My sincere best wishes to the, you know, the Baseball Writers of America for voting me into the Hall of Fame, uh, my first year of eligibility especially. Actually being voted into the Hall of Fame of Baseball by the writers is like Rush Limbaugh being voted in by the Clintons, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll, take, I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> my favorite guy. But, uh, but I always had respect for the writers, as they know, even though we, we had a difference of opinion. And uh, I know they respected the job I did on the mound. So I appreciate the honor they bestowed upon me today, and thank you. you know, I should also point out that being silent all those years did have its downside. After the 1987 season, uh, meeting with the Minnesota Twins that year, we were invited, after they won the World Series, we were invited to the White House, and we were taking the pictures on the White House lawn, and the, and the next day the caption in the, one of the Minnesota papers was, I was listed as an unnamed Secret Service agent. <laughs> it does have its shortcomings. I, I would like to, you know, to get serious a little bit here, and um, hopefully not too serious, but... I'd like to thank you know, the baseball owners that uh, gave me the opportunity to do what I did for so long. And, uh, and the audience here is really Carpenter, the former owners of the, uh, of the Phillies. His, his son, Bobby, is right, right to his immediate left. Uh, you know, Bill Giles also, he was announced earlier. I'd like to thank them for showing up today. We've, you know, we've, I played for them for a lot of years, and we've become very good friends, and they're here on this special day, so thank you. Uh, really, especially in those in the early lean years of the 1970s, uh, you know, he he had he had great confidence in me, and he was committed to building a winner, um, which the Phillies eventually became. You know, to go from winning only 59 games in 1972 to becoming world champions in 1980 is is quite a turnaround, and we owe it to a man like Willie Carpenter, yeah! Bill Giles, to continue that tradition. I was, I was fortunate to be part of that experience, and I, and I thank you, gentlemen. And also, you know, obviously, the, you know, the managers and the coaches I've played for, um, you know, putting or holding two dozen guys together for six months of the season is uh, is quite a, a quite a task, and they, they did a wonderful job. And all the all the managers and coaches I've played for, I, I tip my cap to them. And uh, you know, the, all the all the teammates I played for. Um, the great times we've had on and off the field. I've, you know, I played for 24 years, so I can't name names. You know, you have a lot of uh, a lot of teammates over 20, 24 years. But uh, 
they know who they are. A lot of them here today, and they were announced, and we've remained good friends for all this time. I obviously could never have won 329 games in the major leagues if it wasn't been for this, you know, the type of dedicated players that gave 110% every time I went out to the mound. You know, the timely fielding and hitting attributed to those, those types of records, so thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Take no prisoners. I also had great, you know, great teammates on and off the field, like I said, and they put up with our joking around and, uh, you know, the headbutts, I think we started the headbutt routine. The food fights, we learned that from somewhere else, but <laughs> it, made, it made the baseball experience a great one. As a pitcher, though, I'd absolutely be remiss if I didn't uh, talk about catchers, my main man down here. You know, a catcher's equipment has also been, uh, has been called the tools of ignorance, and I think that's an unfortunate description because behind, uh, behind every successful pitcher, there has to be a very smart catcher. And Tim McCarver is, is that man. He's been a longtime friend. You know, Timmy, Timmy caught me back, uh, started car catching me back in 1964 with the Cardinals and he uh, continued, you know, uh, sometime with the Phillies for a number of years. And we, we had an uh, incredible rapport. I was, I was one of the most focused pitchers, I believe, that ever played the game. I, I trained myself to do that. And uh, Timmy had a great, a great part in that. If, if it wasn't for his abilities to, to, to take control of the game and, and be master of, of all potential situations, So it was made, made it easy on me because it, I was like on cruise control all the time. In fact, Timmy, uh, Timmy forced me to pitch inside. Early in, my, early in my career, I was very reluctant to pitch inside, and uh, Timmy had a way to remedy this. He used to sit up behind the hitter. <laughs> it was just, there was just the umpire there. I, I couldn't see him, so I was forced to pitch inside. And, uh, of course, today with... Uh, with all the people charging the mound, that would be an unfortunate situation. It wasn't for the, the likes of Mr. Gus Heffley and became my martial arts trainer back in the middle 70s. Gus, Gus is quite a man. He extended my career for many years, I believe. Uh, in my early 30s, I, I felt that I needed something to, you know, to sort of supplement my training program. And, and Gus, Gus came along, he came up from the Eagles at that time in about 1975. And I feel strongly that I've been out of the game in a shorter period of time than I did. And the way it is, I, I pitched to my middle 40s. So I owe that, you know, the, the strength, the flexibility, the, you know, that kind of stuff all came from, from Gus as being my mentor. And he was, he was the best at it. And I thank you, Gus. As you know, I'm going in the Hall of Fame as a Philadelphia Philly, and um, the Phillies have a tremendous... Yeah! Okay. Yeah! And Philly is a, you know, a, a tremendous sports town. The city has been very good to me. Indeed, uh, looking back, uh, the tradition of Phillies baseball, Grover Cleveland Alexander, you know, to the whiz kids of the 1950s and last year's pennant winners, um, makes me more appreciative to be associated with uh, a great franchise. And today, you know, today is a very happy, a happy day for Philadelphia baseball, but uh, I think we have to mention that there's other deserving Phillies that, that uh, such as Richie Ashburn, yeah. that... Way to go, Steve. Yeah. I would love to see Richie have uh, the same honor bestowed upon me today in the, in the not too distant future. In Richie's case, he certainly, I, I believe, put up the, the Hall of Fame numbers, and he's one of the, great, the game's great superstars, or Most great stars, definitely. and he, de he deserves being here. Okay. I'd also like to address the fans of, uh, of Philadelphia and the fans of baseball in general. Uh, this Shrine of, of Baseball, the Hall of Fame, and this ceremony today would really be nothing without you fans. You know, obviously, you can see the turnout here. It's, this is what it's all about. 
you know, the hardworking people that take their families out to the ball game, you know, and the millions that turn out. And, you know, when I was pitching in Philadelphia, it was wonderful. You know, the millions of people that are turning out these, these days at uh, Jacob Field in Cleveland or Camden Yard in Baltimore. Even the Rockies uh, in my ho new home state of Colorado, they're setting attendance records. So I strongly believe that the game would really be, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be interesting or wouldn't be worth playing if it wasn't for the people that come out and support us. So. Thank you. Which brings me to my, my own family. Uh, my number one fan, Bev, is right here in the front row. And uh, I met Bev in Winnipeg, uh, Canada, back in 1964 when I was pitching there. And we were married the next year and have two wonderful sons that are, that are here today, Stephen and Scott. So being, being, a, being a ball player's wife, I think, is probably the toughest assignment in life. Um, you know, all the road, the road trips and the demanding schedule is really tough on a family. And, uh, you know, Beva's always, always hung in there and encouraged me to, to keep playing. So with a, without a situation like that, this, these things aren't possible because I saw a lot of guys quit the game because of a family that uh, said it was time to get out. So I always had plenty of encouragement from Bev and love you. <laughs> In fact, she, she kept encouraging me to play until they ripped the uniform off my back, which is, I think is how I ended my career. But, but Bev's always been in my Hall of Fame, dear. That's great. And of course, you know what happens when you've been married for almost 30 years? You end up having grandchildren. So my son Stephen's his wife Iris, or Iris took the kid out, I see. They have a wonderful little son named Phoenix, and he probably got tired and didn't believe anything I was saying anyway. And uh, my youngest son, Scott, and his fiance, Terry Troll, are here also, and uh, they're going to be married in November. I wish you well. Looking forward to it. So a few things about baseball, my philosophy about baseball. You know, I love the game of baseball. Uh, it, it afforded me the opportunity to, uh, to set goals in my life and, and to discipline myself and to mature fully as, as, a, as an adult, as a human being. And also work with a, a bunch of gr great guys that were dedicated to a, achieving success, a, a common goal. And I think it's often, often been said that the bonds of friendship that soldiers make um, in the trenches is probably the strongest in the world. But well, uh, being in spring training to the end of the season, sometimes winning a World Series is is probably equal to that in, in many ways. And it, it's wonderful to uh, to achieve a common goal together. And um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just wonderful to, to be that close to guys for so long and, and keep those friendships throughout the years. You know, from the, we still have friends from the 60s that we're, we're very close to, so it's, it's, uh, it's a fun thing. But, you know, progressing in life is important, too. As, as much as I enjoyed baseball, I, I never did really dwell on the past, as you, you probably read or knew about. So I always felt the energy should be directed into the present and the future. I've mentioned several times uh, before how, how much my concentration and focus were, were the keys to the success on the mound. And, and I always said that the trade coming over from the Cardinals at that time that were competing for a championship every year to a la then last place Philadelphia ball club was a, sort of a blessing in disguise for me. It gave me the opportunity to really seriously put my ideas in, into play and, and to focus even stronger and concentrate greater than I've ever done before, especially in the year 1972 when winning so many games for a team that only won 59. Today, I, I still practice the art of concentration. I'm not, I'm not in the game anymore, but Living in a ranch in, in Colorado and with my family and skiing and motorcycle and riding and recreational activities are, are where I put my focus now. And, um, and when, I talk, when I talk to young kids how important it is to cultivate that skill, focus and concentration are, are there because everything can be achieved with, with this ability. 
I think if, if they can focus and concentrate and work hard, then the challenges of life, to deal with the pressures of life and to avoid the temptations such as drugs and put themselves in a, p a position to succeed will, is much easier, easier attainable. So, but in, in conclusion, I have, I have many friends here today. I'd like to thank them for sharing a special occasion with me. And I'll, I'd, I'd also like to give my best to Phil Rizzuto and uh, Lorraine Day receiving the award for Leo DeRocha, and I wish him the best. But mem memory is baseball's fourth dimension. I know the memory of this day will be with my family and myself forever. And thank you so much. You're very kind. <laughs>